Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. The, okay, so it's a photo of, is it a book or is it a flyer? And it says, the newest secret to change your life. Now you can learn instant healing. Dr. Ya- Kam Yoon, the quickest and least expensive way to health. Okay, so it's a, it's like a, it's like a, is it a, it's a it's an ebook cover? I'm not really well, sure. Well, it's just a book, basically. Yeah, okay. It's a book. Okay, yeah. so. So, well, the, I mean, well, this book was a big turning point mm-hmm. in my life. Okay. It, it's kind of, it, yeah, it was a massive fork. Okay. Um, you know, I was, I had been doing a lot of physical training. I was a professional athlete for a long time. I've been training pretty much my whole life. I, I opened my own gym and I was going around the whole, around, around the world doing all the top level courses with strength coaches and nutritionists and da, la, 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 la. Oh, wow. And, you know, I've been doing this for a few years and then I felt, I discovered this book in my bookshelf and just waiting for you, just waiting for me. And, mm. and that's what I felt like because mm-hmm. I had moved around Hong Kong and the book just was in my bookshelf, con- you know, moving with me and I'd never seen it before. Mm-hmm. It, it was from my ex-girlfriend. She was in the publishing, um, the publishing firm and she published this book years ago. Mm-hmm. And when I discovered it, it was literally in the first few chapters of this book, it had summarized everything I learned. Right. Simplified it. Yeah. And answered a lot of my personal questions. Oh, wow. And I just went, wow. And it, and it was like, I, I thought I just found this, this magic pill. And I was so engrossed and I loved it. I, I, and um, at the time, I was traveling a lot. I was doing... Did some security with a friend. I don't know exactly what 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 my role was, but I was traveling <laughs> around with him. Sounds but, very sketchy, by the way. Just as just as an outsider. <laughs> um, so we were traveling to Vegas, mm-hmm. and oh yeah, the, the, the story doesn't get sketchier at all. <laughs> um, and I was and I was saying to him, I'm like, I, 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 I check out this book. I've 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 because I started to carry it around with me okay, everywhere I traveled okay. with. I read it over and over and over and. And um, he's like, well, this is interesting. I've just made contact with a guy who is actually, it looks very similar to what this is talking about. So his father um, had a massive stroke and couldn't walk, couldn't talk, was just basically. Oh, wow. And he, this was in England. And people in his, in his little township told him, it's like, you should approach this guy. He's, he's, he's a British guy. Um, and he's doing these amazing, he's healing people. He's doing mm-hmm. amazing things. And so he made contact and he got this guy on board to help with his father. And he had done wonders with his father, made to help him walk. He, he, he cleared a lot, didn't completely heal him, but mm-hmm. he helped him tremendously. Huge, yeah. And so my friend, he was, he's quite wealthy. Um, and he goes, I, and this guy, you know, was basically going, well, I, I don't really want need payment. Just donate what you feel Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so my friend is like oh mate tell me what i can do for you Mm -hmm. so he ended up sponsoring this guy who had been doing this chinese energetics to fund him for a whole year so he could start to write a book and la 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 so eventually he's like oh man i've just connected with this guy i'm gonna put you guys in touch oh wow what is yeah amazing what um, a strange coincidence or I, whatever and, and then you know we made we made contact and and he was like my mentor he was i was traveling with him oh, wow. and he was teaching me all the you know the ins and outs and i was like oh my god this is amazing yeah. I, would, I would bring him to hong kong he would live with me for a bit he would introduce him to jujitsu and it was just an amazing journey mm-hmm. um, and that was just it was the start of a life-changing road for me and and it's just opened and it's changed me. Right. Well, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah of it, course. It, it was the massive changing because my life was even, I, I would say it's, it's, I've been pretty blessed, but there was, you know, very traumatic and a lot of incidents I've, I've got away with mm-hmm. and I just can't explain it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So many situations where I, I could be dead. Mm. 
or I could be in jail or, you know, yeah. life changing, but I, I seem to come out unscathed. Wow. Well, enough to be alive right. and kicking and, right. and doing okay. So your your accent is New Zealandish, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, were you born in New Zealand or were you born in Hong Kong? Were you born? born in New Zealand. Born in New Zealand. So when did you leave? I came to Hong Kong in 99. Okay, okay, nice. Yep. Uh, just the year of the dragon, coming into the year of the dragon. Okay. Um, yeah, 99, so it's been, what, 23 years. Wow. So coming up 24. So how does rugby and how does sports, was, were sports, athletics, your way out? Out of New Zealand, what was yep. that? Yep. Okay, so rugby brought me to Hong Kong. Okay, I was a, I was a professional rugby player. Okay, and when you talk about professional rugby player in Hong Kong, we're not talking about big. No, 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 it's, no. It's it's very simple. You, they they pay for your ticket, they give you accommodation, they give you a small allowance. And, yep, and you make up the rest. Yep, yep. But it, it's it's a ticket out of yep. wherever you're from, and and that's that's a big thing for. You know, what I was going through. So where in New Zealand were you living? Um, in Hawke's Bay. Hawke's Bay. It's the right. east coast of North Island. Right. Beautiful weather. Yeah. It's, it's known as the fruit bowl of, of New Zealand. So we do a lot of um, orchards, you know, good wine, mm -hmm, great wine mm -hmm. down there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this book features large in your in your brain. And so in a, in a sense that so, you know, in, J in Japan, there's a saying, it's a saying that my old client used to say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, right? Or when the reader is ready, the book appears, right? Uh -huh. So in a way, the, a book is kind of like your teacher. Uh -huh. And it's kind of, yeah, it is quite astounding that it was in your bookshelf, you're carrying it with you from place to place, and then you're finally, I think I'm going to read it now. It's like, okay. I finally reach this place where I can read it and understand it or I can read it and start engaging with the, with the material without knowing. So, so how much of that is ex accidental? How much of that is like not, I don't, I don't know what the question is. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, <laughs> Take I, it I, away. Ah, yeah. I mean, I don't think anything is accidental, right? Okay. You're either going to, you're, you're either aware and conscious at that moment that it's going it, to it mean something to you or it, or it doesn't. Right. It just sort of slips by. Yeah. Right, and I think everything gets put in your life at a certain time for a reason. If you either take it with two hands or you just fob it off and move on to whatever, mm -hmm. and it may come back around again, right, or it may not. Yeah, but if it's really there, then it's and and if you've got so many coincidences and things like that, it's it's what you can't argue with. Mm -hmm. argue with mm -hmm. it. So yeah, it's, it was it's it's still a big part of my life at the moment and. I'm sure, I, I can imagine how, okay, so like in my case, um, well, like just as an example. So in my case, I was run over by a car and had, you know, severe head trauma, had to kind of, it took about a year for me to, to kind of come back or be, you know, essentially heal. So that experience obviously shapes so much of how I see the world. Which uh -huh. is, you know, kind of what led to this podcast in some ways and whatever. So, on your side, you have this book that you're carrying with you. You read again and again. It made so much sense when you read it because it just it seemed to just kind of plug into to parts of your head or, or your brain that were just hungry for it. But you kept reading it, so you kept reinforcing it. Like when it manifests as a kind of as a as a kind of a, a proof that oh wow this book is. is there's is so, is so much depth to it. Where did this come from for the author? It didn't just didn't come out of thin air. Like obviously, it came from somewhere. Like how do you connect to that story or, or to that legacy of what that author's work is? Hmm. And it's okay for you not to understand the question because most of my guests go, "I don't oh. understand what you're asking." No, I mean, I, I I think he just offers something that is special. I mean, there's nothing else out there. I mean, n now I see a lot more variations of his mindset, mm -hmm. of the way, he's, the way he, he sees things. Um, but he just simplifies it. I just like this simplicity mm -hmm. about it all. Okay. So is there a kernel of truth or a whole, whole set of truths that you find are especially 
because you're a teacher, right? As, mm-hmm. as somebody who teaches BJJ, you're you're you kind of dedicated. You're giving your your time to bring other people to sort of understand how you think, even if how you think means in combat. But if you were to teach somebody who's listening right now something from that book, what could you teach them? Uh, be neutral to a lot of things. Don't be just be neutral. Don't don't be affected by by your thoughts, your emotions, and things like that. It's it's incidents is, is the whole point is being neutral, mm-hmm. trying to be neutral, and and not be overexcited or underexcited or sad, and 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 having the ability to change things just like that. Okay, you know, it's to simplify things. We we as humans tend to overcomplicate things. Yeah. So it's it's trying to keep things real simple. It's, okay. Yeah. Well, for, for for somebody who lives in Saikong, in one of the most expensive cities in the world, in a really beautiful location, in this beautifully shaped, crafted home. You know, there is, I can totally see that sense of simplicity, but isn't it a lot of work to get to that level, to be able to know how to pick and choose between what's clutter and junk and what's, you know, that simplicity. I mean, like, like in, a, in a way that in order to learn simplicity, you kind of have to, do you have to go through a phase of... Yeah, you, you have to go through that complicated okay. life to really decide I, I need this simplicity okay I need balance okay you know I'm, I'm suppose my wife is, is gives me that balance also she she's she's the exact opposite to me and she gives she gives me the balance mm-hmm. that I need mm-hmm. to make a lovely life mm-hmm. for my, my you know for my family and so it's you know everything is like yin and yang mm-hmm. and you want to be sitting right in the middle so one thing I've noticed about myself is that my romantic relationships who I've been most attracted to, my wife is like, all of my girlfriends have been like, you know, my energy is very kind of uh, expressive, extroverted, but two extroverts together can get quite exhausting. Mm-hmm. So it tends to be that yin and yang or opposites attract or whatever. How do you see that world of opposites attract or yin and yang? Or how, how does that guide you, I guess? I think it has to be a principle. It's, it's, it's really understanding a principle in your life is that you're always trying to be neutral and balanced with everything. Okay. If, if you're a hothead, you've got to get a calm person to, mm-hmm. to bring you back down to give mm-hmm. you that sense of being grounded. Okay. Yeah, if you had a stressful day, so you got to come home. You got to be, you, you got to have the opposite, okay. just to kind of balance everything out. Okay. Right. It's it's fine to go, is to experience something high, but then you've got to experience something low, something to kind of bring you back down. But are you the kind of person who will have a down sort of moment in the day, in the afternoon, and say, "It's been really down. I need to kind of amp it up." No, not that. That's not. I, it's 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 just experiences okay. that may give you that high, right? And then you know you want to kind of bring yourself back to nature, which sure. will naturally ground you and make give you that peace. Okay. So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired because that really is my mission then please give it a like subscribe and share shooting it raw yes shooting it raw